What's up, YouTube? Today, I want to go over VoiceCraft, which is a new text-to-speech system that's been open-sourced and released. So here it is, VoiceCraft just open-sourced and released all of the code and models for um, their paper and their demo here. And we're going to take a listen to some of these voice samples down here. Now, this is the source, and then this is the edited transcript. So let's take a listen to this first one here. This is the original audio. What do I really want to do? I want to talk to the audience. And then this is the edited transcript. What do I really want to do? I want to talk to the audience, which is always the best part of my day. So I can't tell the difference between the two of them. And maybe it's because I don't have headphones on or maybe because it's really dang good. Um, I'm going to go with the it's really dang good option. And they have a lot more samples on here to where you can go ahead and listen to it. Um, I'll link this down below in the description. But um, for demonstration's sake, we're going to go ahead and run it on my own computer. And this is the GitHub repo right here. So um, it's constantly being updated right now. It's pretty hot topic. Topic and um, they got a couple of things they want to work on but if you did want to get it set up I would recommend getting it set up with docker you can um, actually get it set up pretty quick here um, but I went ahead and got it installed on Windows but I had to jump through some hoops and do a couple of different builds in order to accomplish that so here I have it in um, Gradio so let me go ahead and get some of this set up before um, we run it all right, so what I have here is a quick little demo that I crafted up over the weekend for um, VoiceCraft so that I could uh, just generate with a web UI. And in order for this to work, there are two different ways that VoiceCraft works. One is speech editing. So that's the one where you can edit parts of a sentence and get that edited. And the second one is zero shot text to speech. This Gradio interface is focused on the speech editing part of it. So we're going to take a look at that first. Now, I have their demo audio right here. Um, if we take a listen to their demo audio, this is the original transcript here. So I'm going to play the audio for it. But when I had approached so near to them, the common object, which the sense deceives, lost not by distance any of its mark. So that is the original transcript. And then what I can do is modify it a little bit to have a target transcript. And this is the audio sample that I want to hear. So now I can just click on generate sample. And now that the audio file is done, we can take a listen to it. So here is the new audio. But when I saw the beautiful skyline in the distance, which the sense deceives, lost not by distance any of its marks. So that is pretty good in my opinion. And we can change this um, to do, do many different things. But I want to go ahead and do this on my own voice. And I'm going to record an audio sample for that. All right, here's a simple voice recorder. Uh, let's go ahead and do it. Thanks for watching the video, guys. If you're liking this type of content, please let me know down below in the comments, like subscribe and all of that cool stuff. All right, that's going to be it for there. So let me go ahead and pull that audio sample and bring it into the folder. I'm going to rename this one, let's just say test.wave. And so the way that I can do this is um, what I have to do is uh, copy it, the audio file into um, or the audio file path here. And then I can do a transcription of it. So I'm just going to manually do it real quick. All right. So here is the original transcript. I'm going to go ahead, take this part out and let's say Thanks for watching the video, video you all. If you like text to speech stuff, let me know down below in the comments. And we're gonna generate from that. Now it's generating, but it takes quite a bit of time on the first um, run through because what it has to do is it uh, aligns this transcript and the target transcript using something called MFA or Montreal Forced Alignment. So it's gonna compare those, find out which region needs to be masked out, and then do all of the autoregressive generation that it needs to accomplish. So that can take quite a bit of time and it takes about a minute or so to put the generated um, file out. So it just finished the alignment for MFA. And once that's done, it's actually 
inference is pretty quick. So this should take only about 15 or so seconds to get me a outputted audio. Alrighty, and here is the new audio. And let's go ahead, take a listen to first the original audio, and then we'll take a listen to the new one. Thanks for watching the video, guys. If you're liking this type of content, please let me know down below in the comments, like, subscribe, and all of that cool stuff. Thanks for watching the video. You all, if you like text-to-speech stuff, let me know down below in the comments, like, subscribe, and all of that cool stuff. So there you go. There are those two audio samples. And this one you could kind of uh, hear it uh, had a little bit of a, a stopping point at this you all area, but the rest of it sounded pretty seamless and flowed pretty nicely. And now that we have this transcribed um, or aligned, what we can actually do is additional modifications. So let's say, uh, <laughs> let's say dislike the video if you don't like text to speech. Let's go ahead, generate sample with that. All right, so it's finished up. And there is one thing about uh, VoiceCraft is if you mask two regions or if you modify two different portions of the original transcript, let's say in the first portion and then a second portion, um, the audio output of it um, noticeably decreases. And I think we'll see that with this one. So let's take a listen to it. Thanks for watching the video, you all. If you like text-to-speech stuff, let me know down below in the comments. Dislike the video if you don't like text-to-speech. Yeah, so there you go. Um, that one kind of broke down a little bit because we modified two different portions of this text. Now, um, with that said, if I only, if I, modify just one area of the sentence um, that's when you get the samples that sound like it wasn't edited at all so say thanks for listening to listening to this video and that one is finished up let's take a listen to that now thanks for listening to this video guys if you're liking this type of content please let me know down below in the comments like subscribe and all of that cool stuff and just real quickly i want to show a uh, text-to-speech with it as well and to do this i am using the um docker that they have provided and this is the easiest way to get it all set up because you can literally just run docker um the docker setup as instructed on their github here and get it up and running. So I'm not gonna go over installation of it in this video, but um, if any of you are a little bit more ambitious and wanna try to get it set up, you can run through the Docker installation here, which is what I would recommend. So just to give a little bit of context on how the text-to-speech works. Um, so it takes the original transcript and just um, appends at the end your text-to-speech uh, generation. So, uh, to do that, what we do is we just write part of the original transcript. And in this in this case, the portion that we want to cut off is about three seconds. So we want about three seconds of audio. And this part of the sentence is about three or so seconds. Um, and then we provide at the end of this target transcript whatever text we want to generate. So I just took a piece out of The Great Gatsby. And it's running through the process right now. So so this is a little bit different um, from like Tortoise where Tortoise generates it using the input audio as kind of um, conditioning vectors. This one is just thinking about continuing the, the sentence or the sequence from the original audio. Here we have the output right here. Um, and I'll play this first one just to tell, just to kind of show you uh, what that, uh, what I mean by it just continues the sequence. So this is concatenated with the original prompt. But when I had approached so near to them, the comment he didn't say anymore. But we've always been unusually communicative in a reserved way. And I understood that he meant a great deal more than that. In consequence, I'm... So what that did is it just read this first portion and then started reading the text that I wanted to generate. So um, the way that the model does that and provides you the generated sample is just by playing that that specific section. So now we're going to play the entire audio sample without the concatenated prompt and see how well it did. He didn't say anymore, but we've always been unusually communicative in a reserved way. And I understood that he meant a great deal more than that. In consequence, I'm inclined to reserve all judgments, a habit that has opened up many curious natures to me and also made me the victim of nada few veteran bores. 
So the text speech output on this one is pretty fantastic for zero shot. And this is a 19 second audio sample generated out of it. Um, though it does seem to use quite a bit of uh, VRAM. So um, I did run into some out of memory issues with it a little bit earlier if I tried to create like um, 30 second audio files. Yeah, this is using the reference audio that they provide to us. And overall, I'd say it's probably one of the best ones that I've seen recently. I've still got to play around with it quite a bit more, but this is a, I think quite a bit of a game changer for open source um, voice modeling because of the zero shot capabilities and then the speech editing for it is going to be pretty, uh, pretty wild. So that's going to be it for today's video. Um, I will be coming out with a follow up video for how you can get this installed in Docker, a more in depth, detailed tutorial on that. For those of you who've been following with my AI voice cloning repository, I still plan on getting a video out for that. I did run into some issues last week, though, where I forgot to include some files and I had to do a bunch of debugging. So that's why it's taking me a little bit of time to get that one, that video out. So, yeah, once again, I'd like to thank all of my followers um, and all of my members for supporting my channel. And I very much appreciate it. So I will see all of you all later.